this lecture session is about a very important topic of clinical relevance in biochemistry cardiac biomarkers before understanding cardiac biomarkers we need to understand what is a biomarker so biomarker is a substance used as an indicator of biological state it should be accurately repeated measurements at reasonable cost must provide additional information and should aid the treatment so if a particular component a biological component falls in this category then it is called as a biomarker now what are cardiac biomarkers they are some protein molecules released into the blood stream from damaged heart muscles because many a times the ecg patterns though they are said to be quite crisp but they may be inconclusive and at that time for clinical confirmation of a diagnosis it is important that biomarkers should be evaluated so they have a characteristic rise and fall pattern basic idea is simply that in a particular condition of injury to the cardiac muscle they will be released into the blood stream they will remain high for a particular time and then they will fall back down now cardiac biomarker what should be the characteristic of a compound to be called as a cardiac biomarker it should have high cardiac specificity pharmacokinetics of cardiac biomarker should be very crisp it should be easily diagnosed and it should play a designed role in the treatment and management of the clinical subject now there have been several cardiac markers that have been identified till now starting from if we see originally there was this compound aapne isko padha bhi hai many a times SGOT or right now it is known as aspartate transaminase LDH lactate dehydrogenase is another cardiac biomarker CPK that is creatine phosphokinase its isoenzyme forms are again also important CKMB then myoglobin which is a muscle protein and two muscle proteins which are nowadays commonly used they are troponin T and troponin I Now classification of cardiac biomarkers biomarkers can be categorized as biomarkers of myocardial injury markers of myocardial necrosis markers of myocardial ischemia markers of hemodynamic stress and inflammatory and prognostic markers so it is not simply that every marker is just for mi or myocardial infarction they can be for several conditions specific like ischemia and also certain prognostic markers this chart shows clearly the process and the classification of cardiac biomarkers according to various stages during the cardiac disease process so when we start with endothelial damage and inflammation which leads to plaque formation in the blood vessels there are markers like ldl cholesterol and reactive oxygen species that is the oxidants active oxygen species inflammatory markers include c reactive protein interleukin components like il6 il10 12 18 tumor necrosis factor and then compounds like homocysteine and others after plaque formation there is destabilization of the plaque at this stage there can be other markers like cytokines lipoproteins adiponectins and pap for myocardial ischemia there are ima that is modified albumin fabp bnp and nt pro bnp and hsp and as a result of myocardial ischemia there will be damage of the cardiac tissue that is cardiac necrosis so for that there are markers like troponin ckmb fabp and myoglobins ultimate cardiac damage myocardial stress and heart failure so at each stage of the cardiac damage you can see that there are specific markers available and according to the need or according to the patient's condition the marker can be used this is again reflection of the same process how vascular injury is caused due to inflammation ischemia and ultimately it leads to a series of events to chronic heart failure 
again further categorization of the markers as markers of inflammation crp hscrp cd40 homocysteine markers of plaque destabilization marker of hemodynamic stress now i move back to the previous point that we discussed in the previous slide that is the pattern of rise and fall which is important for a cardiac biomarker now remember in this particular lecture we are covering these markers ckmb ldh myoglobin troponin i and troponin t and this chart shows their increase and fall pattern so ckmb rises in a duration of 4 to 8 hours reaches to peak within 24 hours and return back to normal in 72 to 96 hours for ldh the duration is all the more earlier that is in 2 to 5 sorry later 2 to 5 days and remains high till 10 days myoglobin starts rising immediately after an event of cardi cardiac muscle damage and remains high for 8 to 10 hours fall back to normal also suddenly that is within the first 24 hours it comes back to normal whereas troponin i and troponin t you would see that they start rising at a duration of 4 to 6 hours reach to peak in 12 to 48 hours and they remain high or return back to normal only after a duration of around 10 days so their specificity varies from one marker to another and their requirement also accordingly varies now this is a typical pattern a chart which shows clearly how the rise and fall takes place if you pay attention to this chart you see that this blue line indicates myoglobin as i told you in the previous chart the pattern it rises early and it falls early returns to normal within 24 hours of onset as compared to this ckmb you see that it starts rising in 4 to 8 hours reaches to peak in around 20 hours and then returns back to normal in around 36 32 to 36 hours whereas c troponin i and troponin t you see they almost rise and fall in a similar pattern and you see that their pat their value remains high does not reach to normal even after 48 hours and as we saw in the previous chart it comes back to normal in a duration of about 7 to 10 days so that specifies that the pattern and if you see out of these four most likely to be of use are troponin t and troponin i and because of a sharp peak and a sudden rise ckmb is also diagnostically important now these are certain other cardiac biomarkers so if we see these are some other that is mi rna ima mpo and we would discuss them in another lecture series today just a list of the markers are here in this present session again a diagrammatic representation of the various markers so in various reference books in various reference articles you will find such patterns which clarify the need and requirement of these cardiac biomarkers now let us talk individually briefly about this markers troponin t what is troponin t it is a regulatory protein released when cardiac cell necrosis occurs so we know that in the muscle protein troponin the three components t c and i are present and whenever there is damage or necrosis of the muscular cells of cardiac muscles then these are released so these are certain commonly available assays and their specificity and their assay range is also given ckmb now creatine kinase or creatine phosphokinase if we uh, understand the biochemical importance we know this that this is an enzyme which is required for conversion of creatine to creatine phosphate and creatine phosphate is actually a high energy compound which is useful in case of sudden energy requirement in cardiac muscles so it is a cytosolic enzyme and is a dimer composed of two subunits subunit b 
which is also known as the brain type and M which is known as the muscle type. So CK can have three isoenzyme forms CK1, 2 and 3 which are more commonly called as CKBB, CKMB and CKMM. So BB is concentrated in brain, MB is concentrated in the myocardial tissue and MM is concentrated in the skeletal muscle. Now besides measurement of CKMP or estimation of CKMB, the ratio of CKMB to total CK component is also important in the diagnosis of myocardial damage. This is the relative index which allows the distinction between increased total CK due to myocardial damage and that due to skeletal and neural damage. And a relative index exceeding 3 indicates acute myocardial infarction. Now what is the significance of this relative index? Because in certain cases of trauma, a patient may have multiple types of injuries along with myocardial damage. And at that time, a relative index will help in understanding that an event of myocardial injury has also occurred. Next is myoglobin, though it was detected earlier, but the relevance diagnostic importance is less as compared to troponin and CKMB. It is a small sized heme protein found in all tissues and assists mainly in oxygen transport. We all know that myoglobin is responsible for oxygen transport in the muscle tissue. It is released from all damaged tissues. The level rises rapidly, then troponin and CKMB. It is released within one hour and the normal value range is from 17 to 105. But it rises early, reaches to peak in 6 to 9 hours and returns back to normal within 12 to 24 hours. So within 24 hours is, it is only diagnostically important. If the event is of an older duration, then the importance of this particular marker reduces. So the conditions in which myoglobin can increase is acute myocardial infarction, skeletal muscle damage or muscular dystrophy conditions also may relate to increased my myoglobin concentration. Other than that, it is also present during renal failure and severe uremia or in conditions of shock and trauma, which means that this is not only specific to the condition of myocardial infarction or myocardial damage. Or in other words, we can say that it is non-specific. So the uses we have already discussed, the drawbacks are that it has poor specificity and therefore does not allow or always predict only myocardial injury. Now again, this chart shows the comparison of troponin, CKMB and myoglobin. And this chart was shown earlier also in this presentation. Uh, this is very important and for you students to present in your examination also, it is a very easy chart. You can see the patterns, myoglobin, myoglobin rising early, falling early, CKMB rising, reaching to the peak in 20 to 24 hours and then falling back to normal within 36 hours. Troponin rising, reaching to peak and is the increased level is sustained up to a duration of around 7 to 10 days. To summarize, cardiac biomarkers are important in diagnosis, prognosis and treatment follow up. No single biomarker can be confirmatory. A panel of such markers based on their mechanism of elevation can be more useful. Currently, the most common cardiac panel that is used includes CKMB, troponin I and NT Pro BNP. So all the recent cardiac markers, the newer cardiac markers we will be discussing in another lecture series. Thank you very much.